you know, there's something pretty cool about what's going on right now. Good morning, guys. So we're uh, we're still working on it. We're getting her done. I got kicked out of the quad track by leg arms. Now he's threatening to fire me. He said, if I want to earn my keep, I have to drive the 9370 today. Uh, not really excited about that, but I guess I can, you know, if it keeps my job here. Brad's been running this truck a lot. It's my turn to get a little chance in it. So I'm gonna run the truck. The guys got the combines, they're running those. I'm, uh, I'm gonna be a trucker. Let's go truck some grain. Yeah. Clean up on aisle three. Aisle three, clean up. That's actually for the animals. We like to feed our animals around here. We'll come back to the grain back and clean that up later. First time of the year. First time it happened. The game was left open. It wasn't me though. I guarantee that. Got leg arms in the grain cart. He's running Quadzilla. And he is filling me right now. So hopefully he puts a nice legal load on. I'm gonna run this to town. Thank you. I'll be back. All right, let's take the trucks down. If you're wondering, I do have my seatbelt on. There's just no uh, shoulder strap. It's an older truck, guys. Cut it some slack. Let's see, seatbelts check. Everything's good to go. Oh, egg cam. Let's see, egg cam. I need coal cam. Let's see, there's fifth wheel plate cam, rear grain trailer cam, front grain trailer cam. Uh, split view, split view, split view, split view. Yeah, there we go. Coal cam. That's what I want. It's go time. So I'm going down to the end of the Benjamin Road. This road tees into Highway 2, crosses the railroad tracks, which is BN's railway right below this hill here. This hill's got a pretty steep grade, and then you have a really short area to stop before you cross the tracks. So with trucks and our drivers, we always tell everybody just to get in a really low gear at the top of the hill, run the jakes down, lightly use the brakes, and that way you're not gonna end up jumping the tracks and pulling a Dukes of Hazard with a you know 120,000 pound grain trailer. But this is a great opportunity to hear some jakes. You guys want to hear some jakes? Let's do it. Coming, no BN freight train, no oil train. Carefully cross the tracks. I'll keep it in a low gear so I can uh, creep over the top here. And there's a nice steep drop down onto Highway 2 here. So I like to. Right down to the edge here and stop. Looks good. All right, let's go across. Now we're at. Harbor States. This is uh, our local grain elevator that we sell most of our spring wheat to. And uh, it's awesome because it's really close to where we live. So right here is the probe. They're gonna run the probe. It's gonna probe a sample of wheat out of the back of the grain trailer so that way they can test moisture, protein, as well as some other uh, sample factors they need when they send the sample off. All right, well, I got my slip. They just print this off and they're done after they weigh the truck. What's amazing to me though is the protein is 13.9, which is about perfect. And the test weight 61 pounds. 
for being how dry it was and expecting a, a really bad crop, that's very good wheat right there. That's perfect. That we'd love it to stay right there. The test weight and the protein are absolutely perfect. Obviously, it'd be nice to have more yield, but the quality of the grain is great. So, seatbelts on. Let's do it. Worst part about driving on county roads with no wind. That truck in front of me could be three miles up the road or it could be 200 feet in front of me. Just don't know. Just gotta drive slow and be ready to press the brakes. All right, back in the field. I'm playing the waiting game again because I'm the trucker, which means this guy over here. But that big red thing's gotta come fill me up here in a second. We were hauling to the grain elevator, but they had a train they're filling on one elevator, and so the other elevator's got a bunch of shenanigans going on as far as a lot of trucks trying to dump at the same time, so that's slow. So I've got like 24,000 bushels right here in that pile, covered and ready. This pile's at 22,000. I've got 1,000 on that truck. We'll probably put another 1,000 or two on it, and then this pile's gonna be, I think, done. So we'll be able to put the tarp on that, and then we gotta go back to what do we do with the rest of the wheat, because we're still gonna have some more bushels, which is awesome. Not complaining about having too much wheat, that's good. It's just to be really nice if we could put it in places that we'd prefer to have it. But we'll see how it goes. Let's fire this thing up. Another thousand in the pile. Go back to the field and get another thousand. I think we can only put about two more on this thing. Maybe three.
see it's got a little darker since uh, last had the camera on. Grain pile still growing. I'm gonna dump another thousand on it. We're getting close to being done with the grain pile. The field that we're in, we're really close to being done. I hope we can finish that soon. Here's Scott's uh, cool little light deal. Oh, 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 oh. That's pretty sweet, huh? All right, I'm gonna fire this up. Let's get this going, get this truck done so I can get it back. And then maybe we can shut down and I can go to bed because I am ready to sleep. Well, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna head back to the field in that thing. And I'm gonna take a nap in the sleeper until I'm full again. Or I'll just call it quits and go to bed. I'll decide on the way. What's up guys? So we're on the final stretch. Just under 500 acres left to cut on the farm, so we'll get most of that done today, probably finish the last little bit up tomorrow, right before a big rain system coming through all next week, which is perfect. We'll get done just in time. I got kicked out of the 9370. So Wags, Brad, he's, uh, he's running the 9370. Huh, that's kind of weird. Leg arms in the loader, with a bucket of grain. Okay, well, let's just uh, see what happens here. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Coming together, think I get what he's doing here. Um, is he gonna dump that in the cart? Yep, that's what's going on. Yeah, he's doing it. Is he gonna hit the cart? I think he just hit the cart. Yes, he did. <laughs> the wheel, at least. And he barely fits over the top of that thing. Weight's going up. Nice, he's a professional. Man, he's good. There we go. Just in time for the combine. Is he gonna dump it in his header? What is this guy doing? This is why we wanna fire him. It's just not normal. You just don't do that. Look at that. See what he's doing there? You gotta be kidding me. That's hilarious. He's dumping the last of the grain into my dad's header with the loader. Wow, that's great. That is classic. Good job, leg arms. I guess we're not firing you. He did a good job. All right, I gotta drive this thing over and dump a truck. Yep, never doesn't happen very often. But what we're doing right now is we're actually harvesting the plot that we did with the 5000 series flex coil nine inch spacing hoe drill up against the 500 DS disc drill that we had earlier this year as a demo. Most of this field was seen with the disc drill, but right at the end here was seen with the hoe drill. We had a line right down the center here. So they're actually cutting off one side and then the other side and doing a sample test as well as a yield test and we're going to see if we see any difference between those two a lot of people have asked about this there's something we want to do a long time ago we finally got the chance to do it so that's what we're doing right now I just spoke with my dad and the yields on these two splot, or, uh, test strips came in one bushel apart. The disc drill did 34 bushels an acre. The 5,000 flex coil did 33 bushels an acre. So the next step will be we're gonna take and do a protein sample on each one, see if the protein's any different. If the protein's the same, then I would say it's about a wash. Really isn't any difference between the two. But technically, precision drill did one bushel an acre better. So that is good to know. You know, there's something pretty cool about what's going on right now. We're on the very homestead of Welker Farms of my great grandpa, John Welker. This land has been farmed in a lot of years. It's been the CRP program. This is the first crop coming off in many years. You know what, just let's take a look.
Isn't that just amazing? They homesteaded in probably the worst spot in like a 10 mile radius. And yet, we're still here. They made it happen. Somehow, with this lousy of land right here, I mean, it's, you saw, it's junk land. A lot of it's terrible. I mean, this crop right here that we're pulling off, the reason this is a CRP, because it's just not good land. And yet, they're one of the few that homesteaded and the name still lives on. You know, I guess it's a, a good testimony of perseverance and it's a story. It's amazing. So, it's exciting. It's fun to hunt farm where my great grandpa did.